Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. I am the versatile radio presenter, PK, and this is Emilia Radio, live from Weissen, Burger number 29, 44135, Dortmund, Germany. And I have the privilege, honor, and the audacity to introduce to you or welcome the one and only Bishop Nathaniel Israel. Bishop. All praise. 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 Bishop. How are you doing this today? I'm doing all right. You know, we had our brother, uh, we just had a brother that was uh, murdered June 12th, Rashad wow. um, Brooks. I believe that was his name, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, and definitely, we definitely have to uh, keep, keep that in mind that the struggle still continues. The time of Jacob troubles is at hand. And, uh, but we're going to get through it all. We're going to get through this. Oh, uh, my, my, my condolences gone out to the bereaved family. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but it's so sad. so sad. Yes, it is. It's going to happen more and more. They're trying to make changes, but uh, the changes that they're going to make are going to be more detrimental here in the United States of America. They're talking about defunding the police or uh, abolishing the police department, which I think will be very detrimental to the Black community because we are violent people when it comes one to another. So it would be very harmful for them to do that. But other than that, all praise to the Lord. Everything's good. Yeah, all praise, all praise, all praise. And tonight, the topic is, if, uh, let me remove the if, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. I wouldn't eat that if I was you. I wouldn't eat that if I were you. So me, yes. I am talking to you. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't eat that if I were you. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. Hmm, this topic is so, is so uh, ah, ah, thank God. Hmm. It's a very good topic. A lot very of good topic, but. Uh, I've never come across this topic in my life because uh, we were told that now everything, he died to cleanse everything. He came to clean everything. If I say he came, you do understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's set, let's set the ball rolling now. Bishop. All right. What we want to do is let's go to... Uh... Second Corinthians chapter two, the last verse, please. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Speak, speak me in Christ. In Christ, right. We're not as many that corrupt the word of God. What you're going to find out today is that the Christian church the abominable Christian church has corrupted the word of God. They have twisted the scriptures and done a, gone against God's laws. And what they try to do is use the writings of the apostle Paul. Now, before we get to Paul, though, here's a question everybody has to ask. Has to ask themselves, mm -hmm. who is over who? Is Paul over Christ or is Christ over Paul? Huh? That is the question the listening audience needs to ask. Is Christ over Paul or is Paul over Christ? Okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. Watch this. Give me uh, Matthew 5. 
and verse 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 17. Yep. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So the first thing you got to understand about Christ, the son of God, he said, think not, don't even think in your little head that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Meaning mm -hmm. there's nothing that the law said he came to destroy or nothing that the prophets said he came to destroy. He says, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. There is one law that Christ fulfilled and that's the law of sacrifice. I'm gonna say it again. That's the law of sacrifice. Give me that in uh, Acts 3.18. Acts 3.18. Acts 3.18. Yep. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So what did he fulfill? That Christ must suffer. Suffer for what? for the sins of the nation of Israel as that eternal sacrifice, okay? That's what he fulfilled. Christ did not fulfill anything else. So now back to Matthew 5 and verse 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So as far as I can see, we're on earth and we can see heaven above, the sky. So heaven and earth is still here. It said till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled yet. All has not been fulfilled. Watch this. From there, verse 19, read on. Verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. When Christ said whosoever shall teach uh, one to break the least commandment, he shall be called the least in the kingdom. That means you're just going to be a thought. You're going to be put to death. That means you're least. But the next part says, whosoever shall do and teach them. Do and teach what? The commandments, the commandments, the commandments. It says the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we want to be great. Many of the brothers and sisters that come in this truth now, we want to be great. The Christian church, you're going to be least in the kingdom because you're going to be destroyed. If y'all don't come out of that damnable doctrine. From there, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Oh, before we go to Timothy, go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. I'm sorry. Because I made a statement. Does Is Paul over Christ or is Christ over Paul? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Be ye, meaning be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So Paul was a follower of Christ. Christ was not a follow, follower of Paul. So let's get your thoughts right, you in the Christian church. So now, when we get to the writings of Paul, this is where you get stupid in that dumb Christian church you're in. First Timothy chapter four. Let's start at verse one now. Christ said, don't think that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy the law, but yeah. to fulfill it. He fulfilled the law of sacrifice. Now, what people do is they go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 to say you can eat whatever you want to eat. But let's see if that's what he's saying. Read. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the latter times is now. It says some shall depart from the church, from the faith, meaning depart from the faith of Christ, and what? And give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. 
What is seducing spirits, doctrines of devil? The Christian church. Christianity is a seducing spirit and it is a doctrine of devils. That's right, I said it. Christianity, whether you are Roman Catholic, Baptist, Lutheran, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Episcopalian, that is a seducing spirit and it is a doctrine of devils. That's right, read on. Verse two, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What does it mean speaking lies in hypocrisy? You have the Bible in your hand. You read the Bible, but you know what you do? I don't have to do what the Bible says. Uh, I could do whatever I want to do in Jesus. That's speaking lies and hypocrisy. That's what the Christian church is based upon. Hypocritical lies. Read. Oh, and the part saying having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know how you got wrinkles in your clothes and you get an iron to try to get the wrinkles out? Uh -huh. But if the iron burns your shirt, let's say you got a big burn stain here. Mm -hmm. You can't get that stain out. You got to throw it away. You got to throw the whole shirt away. So God is saying you have some of our people's conscience is seared with a hot iron of what? Seducing mm -hmm. spirit and doctrine of devils. You can't get that from them. They're no good to God. They have to go. They got to go. We don't. Verse three, forbidding to marry. Stop. And what faith, what doctrine of devil forbids men to marry? You got to answer the question. Who says it's not good that priests marry? The Catholic Church says men should not marry. If you become a priest in the Catholic Church organization, men cannot get married. Yeah. Now, the law of God says, get Genesis 2.18. Hold this, get Genesis 2.18. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It is not good that man should be alone. When you read down, he created woman for him. So now give me Hebrews 13, verse 4. We are identifying the religion that teaches to abstain from marriage, to forbidding to marry. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So the Bible says marriage is honorable. Christ is speaking through Paul. Marriage is honorable. So let's go back to 1 Timothy 4. Paul is addressing a religion that would be risen up in the earth in the last days that would forbid you to marry. Mm -hmm. That's the Christian Roman Catholic Church. Read verse 3 again. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 3. Forbidding to marry and command, <clears throat> excuse me, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So the next part says, and commanding to uh, abstain from meats. For example, the Catholic Church says on Friday, Good Fridays, for example, you cannot eat meat, you can mm -hmm. eat fish but no meat. So now it says, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with the thanksgiving. Emilia Radio. Of them which believe and know the truth. Of them which believe and know the truth. The truth. So what is the truth? What is the truth? Psalms 119 <laughs> verse 142. Uh, Bishop. Yes. <laughs> Upon all these things, why did God tell us not to eat certain foods? Certain. I'm getting there. I'm going to get there. Just hold okay. on. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, because I, 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 it's a question uh, 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 that is dear to my heart. Okay, let me get it. <laughs> so now, the question is, Paul said, uh, and uh, commanded to abstain from meats, 
which mm-hmm. God has created to be received with thanksgiving of yes. them which believe and know the truth. But what is the truth? Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 142. What is the truth? The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So, thy law is the truth. So now we've got a better understanding of what Paul is talking about. Verse mm-hmm. First Timothy 4, 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the law. Of them which believe and know the They're law. Yeah. Oh! So now watch the next verse. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. What does it mean every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused? Meaning according to God's law. We're going to read God's law. Watch the next verse. Verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. For it is meaning the meat is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Where can we read where the meats of God are sanctified? Let's go to Leviticus 11. Watch this. Leviticus 11. Pay close attention. Paul didn't make up his own doctrine. The Roman Catholic Church made up their own doctrine. Leviticus 11, let's start at verse 44, please. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So notice it says, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Remember what we read earlier in 1 Timothy 4, verse 5 about meats, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What we're about to read in Leviticus 11 is what helps sanctify us, mm-hmm. the word by the word of God. Let's jump up in Leviticus 11 and let's start at verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are upon, that are on the earth. So now God is going to give us a, least, a list, a list of beasts, animals, that we can eat and that we cannot eat. Read on. Verse 3. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud, among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So, uh, Barakal, let's put up, what does it mean, part of the hoof? When the Bible talks about parting the hoof, it's this type of an animal. You see how his hoof is parted, is split, and cloven footed, meaning it's that, it's that hard foot, that hard animal foot, but it has a split. Parts the hoof, cloven footed, cloven footed, okay? So mm-hmm. now, Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beast, that shall ye eat. Show me the beast that does not have a cloven foot. Barakal, come on. Give me, yes, give me the next one at where it has the words on it. So that's the difference, right? Cloven footed does not part the hoof. Like a horse is cloven footed, like that, but it does not part the hoof. Go back to the parted hoof one so we can see. That's parting the hoof. God yeah, says the one the that has cloven footed and parted the hoof, you can eat that. Now go to the next one. Okay, here's some examples of cloven footed animals with parted mm-hmm. hoof goat, ibex, gazelle, ox. Antelope, sheep, deer, orcs. So these are some examples of cloven footed that parts the hoof. These are the type of animals you can you can eat. Now, Barak, I'll put the picture up about the um chew of the cud. What does it mean, choose the cud? 
Bishop. Yes, sir. Does it mean, according to Proverbs, or, or I want you to explain Proverbs chapter 23, verse 20, for me and the listener. Does it mean, don't eat meat, because every meat is meat? Because I am confused here. Right now, the Look, pictures that you are showing me, I am, I am confused. Proverbs 23, what verse? Proverbs chapter 23, verse 20. Okay, be not among wine bearers. Don't be around drunk people. Among riotous eaters of flesh. Riotous, riotous, like people that, that cause a lot of noise and cause destruction. It's saying mm -hmm. don't be around them. That's all it's saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so and you yes, talk ahead. about doctrine, post doctrine, Roman Catholic doctrine. Does it mean uh, all the religious bodies in the whole world, world, each and every one has its own doctrine according to what we should eat and what we should not eat? Uh, you have some religions that do. Uh, you have the, uh, hold on, you have the Catholic Church, though, that tells you not to eat meat on Fridays. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to eat meat on Fridays. Yeah. I'm looking for the uh, the picture here. Bear with me one second. And we have also um, this church, SDA, Seventh-day Adventists. They also have their doctrines concerning uh, which meat or fish you should eat. A whole yes. lot. And it makes people confused. Correct. I sent you the picture, Barakel. I sent it to Hashem. Correct. It makes a lot of people confused. And what is the Bible telling us? We want to know the exact, as you are teaching us, we yes. want to know the deep. And we, we want to do away with church doctrine, religion yes. doctrine. What is the Bible telling us concerning exactly. it? Mm -hmm. All right. If you yeah. can look, you see the mouth of the cow. Yeah. The food goes through the mouth. He chews yeah. it. It goes mm -hmm. down into one stomach. Yes. Then it goes through the intestine, comes back up to the mouth again, yeah. and he chews it a second time. Yes. And swallows it. That's what it means. Chew the cud. They chew it. They chew the cud is going into the grass, the vegetation. They chew yeah. it, swallow it, digest it, and it comes back up. They chew it a second time. And they swallow it. Okay. That's and what they say means. applies to goat, sheep. Yeah, I have experienced yes. that. Yeah. Yes. You see them lying there and be, I mean, chewing it again. Yes. Now, horses do the same thing, but guess what? A horse doesn't have a split hoof. A horse uh -huh. does not have the split hoof, correct? Like you see right so, there. So it's not good to eat horse. Correct. Do not eat a horse. So now let's get back. To Leviticus 11, we are in verse 4. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Thank you, Barakal. I forgot this one. So a camel chews the cud. A, cha a camel will chew vegetation, swallow it, bring it back again, and swallow it again. But look at his foot. His foot is not cloven-footed. Mm -hmm. His foot is not cloven, meaning that hard, hard rock foot. So God says, because of that, you cannot eat it. He's unclean to you. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So the coney, here's an example of a coney, okay? Mm -hmm. He chews the cud too, but he does not divide the hoof. He has a, a soft foot. So God says, you can't eat that either. Read on. Verse six, and the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So this is an example of a hare. It's in the rabbit family. It mm -hmm. chews the cut, but it does not divide the hoof. It has paws. It has soft foot. God says you cannot eat that either. Read on. Verse 7. 
and the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So the swine, which is a pig, he's cloven footed, meaning yeah. look, he has yeah. a hard foot yeah. that's split, but he does not chew the cud. The swine eats anything. It'll eat fish, it'll eat chicken, it'll eat steak, okay? But it does not, it, it does not chew the cud. It does not eat uh, grass and chew it into a second stomach, regurgitate it and swallow it again. Pigs, swine doesn't do that. Another word for swine is pig or hog, yeah. okay, or boar. And, and, and what about uh, the, uh, the best? We're going to get there. Okay. We're going to get there. Let's, let's, then, let's, then, let's go. There. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 8. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So God says don't even touch their dead body. That's their carcass. Means. Read. They sh Excuse me. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So fins and scales. In order to eat the fish, the fish must have these two qualities. It must have fins, like you see here at the top, the back, and scales. See on the side of his body. Those, mm -hmm. those ridges, those are called scales. Sharks do not have scales. A shark has fins, but it does not have scales. You cannot eat that. Uh, the American conga, an eel, it has some fins, but it does not have no scales. Okay, yeah. catfish. You have a picture of a catfish? I know I'm some a, people love that one. damn catfish. It has fins, but no scales. You can't even eat a catfish. That's the one with so the I'm whiskers. God says don't eat that. In order to eat a creature from the waters, it must have fins and scales. So that means you cannot eat octopus. It doesn't have fins or scales. You cannot eat shrimp, okay? It has a shell, it doesn't have scales, okay? Mm -hmm. You cannot eat shrimp. I know a lot of you black women mad right now. You can't eat shrimp, or the, like in America they say scrimp. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what verse you at? Verse 10. Go ahead. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Right, so if the fish does not have these two qualities, fins and scales, God says, have them in abomination. Shark is an abomination to eat. Octopus is an abomination to eat, why? Because they don't have fins and scales. Yeah. Uh, shrimp is an abomination to eat, why? It does not have fins and scales, okay? Lobster is an abomination, why? because it does not have both fins and scales. So God's given us a list. We don't. Verse 11, they shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Read. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 13. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the os Hello? osifrage and the osprey. Right. So here's an example. The eagle, we cannot eat any bird that's an eagle. The osifrage, which is the top right, and an osprey. These are birds of prey. These are hunters. Hunter. God says, do not eat those type of birds. Birds that hunt other animals, don't eat them. Like the eagle, the ossifrage, and the osprey. Don't eat them, God says. We don't? And the vulture and the kite after his kind. The vulture and the kite. The vulture eats dead animals. God says, don't eat the vulture. And a kite is a bird of prey. So 
birds of prey and animals that are scavengers. God says, do not eat them. Don't eat them. Read. Verse 15, every raven after his kind. Every raven after his kind. You see the raven here and a crow is in the raven family. God says, do not eat them. These are scavenger birds. They eat the dead that's on the ground. God says, don't eat them. Read. And the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind. So God says, the little owl, don't eat. It says, I'm sorry, and the owl, that's what you see there. God says, don't eat that. The night hawk, far left, bottom left. God says, don't eat that. And the cuckoo in the center at the bottom. God says, don't eat that. And the hawk after his kind of bird of prey. These all are birds of prey. God says, do not eat those. Read. And the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl. And the little owl. Okay, bottom left is a little owl. The cormorant. Look at the cormorant just for a moment. It has webbed feet. I want y'all to look at the feet of the cormorant. It has webbed feet to swim. God, and they hunt, what do they hunt when they're in the water? Fish. God is saying those types of birds don't eat. So the little owl and the great owl, they eat like mice and small animals on land. God says don't eat those. The cormorant hunts for fish in the water. It has webbed feet. God says don't eat that like the duck falls in this family. Do not eat animals, birds with webbed feet. So this is a list of animals and birds that God says don't eat. And I know a lot of black people are upset because you like to eat whatever you want to eat. Because you've been listening to your false Christian minister that said, eat whatever you want. This is why you get sick and drop dead. This is why you uh, get gout and are Bishop, overweight. Bishop, especially the cat family. We eat yes. all. The cat family. We eat all. <laughs> what family? Cat family. Cat. Oh, God. Cat family. I'm talking about the cheetahs, you know, the lions. Yeah. We wow, eat wow, all wow, in wow, Africa. Wow. And they are the cat family. <laughs> we didn't yeah. know all these things, you know. So, so this, I mean, you are taking us deep and bringing out the truth. Because yes. all that they have been telling us is uh, he has cleaned everything. He came to sacrifice his blood for everything. So everything is clean. Right. That's an example on the screen of a swan. God says, don't eat that. Barakel, let me know when you get the picture, right? Because I'm not moving past this verse. Yes, sir. I want to make sure we have examples of the birds God is saying, do not eat. Then it means animals, that is uh, 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 his fellow animal. Yes. We shouldn't you, eat them. You know what's funny, PK? Hey, no. you have a car, right? You have a car? Yeah. Okay. You know when you go to buy the car, the man will say, put regular unleaded fuel in the car. Do not put diesel fuel yeah. in the car. Yeah. yeah. If you put diesel fuel in the car, the car will break down. Of so course. everybody obeys that. But when you're born and you want to eat food, when you get older, God says don't eat certain things. And you go, I'm not listening to God. The white man says I can eat. And you listen to the white man. So look, you see the bottom left is a swan. The top is a pelican. And the bottom right is the gear eagle. So read that verse again. Verse 18. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 18. And the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle. So the swan, the pelican, and the gear eagle, we cannot eat. God says, don't eat it. Eat. Read. And the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. So now, it says, and the stork, that's the top left, we cannot eat stork. Then it says the heron, that's on the far right, top. We cannot eat. Then it says, after her kind. When it says after her kind, meaning birds that are similar to those birds, don't eat. 
because there's a whole lot of species of birds like that. Then it says, and the lap wing, bottom left. The lap wing, then it says, and the bat. And now, you know, in China, they go crazy off this bat. They, that's mm -hmm. how the damn thing with Wuhan, China started. The damn yeah. coronavirus. Eat Him. these damn bats. <laughs> what they did was they, 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 they fused uh, bat DNA with animal, I mean, bat DNA with human fetal tissue to create the disease. That's what they did. So again, we cannot eat stork or any bird similar to the stork. We cannot eat heron or any bird similar to the heron. We cannot eat the lapwing or any bird similar to the lap wing. And we cannot eat bat or any creature similar to the bat. A bat is a mouse with wings. We cannot eat it. Okay, let's read on. All fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Now this is getting into the birds that creep, like the bat creeps on all fours when it's on the ground, but then it goes into insects, go ahead. Verse 21, mm -hmm. yet, yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet. Not to this one, not this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, leave that right there. Read that again. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. You see that Paul says, which have legs above their feet, meaning their hind legs go above their body. Okay, like the grasshopper and the locust family. The locust and the grasshopper. They have legs above their feet, meaning that the legs are extended far and above to help them leap, to help them jump into the air so that they can fly. God is saying these type of insects is clean to eat. It's okay to eat this type of insect. Go ahead. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the, the locust. Read that again. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the, the bald locust after his kind. So remember in Matthew three verse four, I'll read it. It says, "And the same John had his raiment, his clothing, of camel's hair." and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So John the Baptist ate locusts like this and wild honey. So he would dip the wild, the locusts in wild honey and eat it. Why? Because it was lawful to eat. Okay, what verse you at? Verse 22. Go ahead. And the bald locusts. After Read the whole his, verse again. Read over. Verse 22. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. Barakel, put the correct picture up on the screen now. Where it talks about the bald locust. Nope, that ain't it. Bald locust. Bishop. Yes. Uh, somebody sends a message now. And I read, tell Bishop, someone said, let no man judge you in food or Sabbath. Mm. Okay, we'll get that in a moment. Verse 22. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. So here's an example of the ball locust, which God says you can eat, the grasshopper, the locust, and the beetle. So there's certain types of insects God says is okay to eat. Okay, read the next verse. But with this insect, um, it's very difficult you see black man eating this. I know. It's, it's very difficult. Hey, when we get in the wilderness, I, I, am more than, I am more than 40 years now, but I have never seen it in my life, in my community, eating this type of insect. No, 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 no. All that we know is, you know, you know it yourself. Huh? Yes, yes, I know, I know. Yeah. 
What verse yeah. we at? Verse 23. Uh-huh. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Read. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. Read. And whosoever beareth out of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. So if you ate something unclean, you were unclean until the even. You had to wash your clothes, okay, if you touched it. Read. A, a message from Facebook, please. Latasha uh, Buckley. And I read, is Turkey Vulture and other Turkey the same? That is one question. Because it continues, I, I seen Turkey Vulture eating dead carcass in the street. Okay, that means that turkey was starving. <laughs> but a turkey is not in the vulture family. No. Of Turkey Vulture and Vulture. No, turkey is not it's in not the vulture part. family. No, it is not. Two different birds. Okay? We don't but he is saying he has seen a turkey eating dead carcass. In the street, it was starving probably, because turkeys eat grain and uh, the seeds on the ground. So what she probably saw, either it wasn't a turkey or it was desperately starving for something. <laughs> Read verse twenty-six: the carcasses okay. of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. Go ahead. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all... So let's all put a list of animals that go on their paws. The, your paw is the soft foot or soft hands. For example, monkeys go on all fours. They go on their paws, okay? In Liberia, it's customary sometimes for delicacy. To, some of them eat monkey meat. God says, you cannot eat that. They go on their paws. Cat goes on their paw. God says, you cannot eat cat. You cannot eat cheetah. You cannot eat tiger or lion. Bears go on their paws. You cannot eat a bear. Dogs go on their paws. You cannot eat that. Read that verse again. Leviticus 11 and chapter 27. Verse and 27. And verse 27, pardon. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. So carcass means dead body. So that if the animal is dead, God said, don't pick it up, don't touch it. Read. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Uh -huh. they, they are unclean unto you. Go ahead. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth the weasel, and the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind. All right, let's put that on the screen. Here we go, example, the weasel, the tortoise, and the mouse. These, sometimes you call these things bushmeat, okay? What yeah. we're reading about now is bushmeat. God says, don't eat bushmeat. Leave it alone. Don't make hamburgers out of it. Don't make chili out of them. Don't do that. God is saying, don't eat. I remember as a young boy, we used to eat uh, tortoise stew. My uncle used to put this at the bottom in a barrel for a few days and let all the insides uh, clean out. And then he would boil it in hot water and we would have soup. So now as I'm older, God says, don't eat that. Okay? And, and when you go to Africa, it's very expensive. Bush meat. Hey! Very expensive in Africa, especially... Uh -huh in my communities. And let me use this opportunity to announce the phone lines again, because I got information that a lot of people want to call through WhatsApp, via WhatsApp, please. The number is zero plus four nine plus four nine or zero zero four nine one five two one eight two zero one five six eight. 
you can call via WhatsApp and ask your question. Bishop is still here. Bishop, let it go. Okay, we're at verse, read 30 again. Verse, the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 30. And the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. Okay, let's put that up on the screen, Barakel, please. Okay, the Bible says, and the ferret, here's an example of ferret, bush meat, mm -hmm. and the chameleon, that's your lizard at the top right, yeah. and the lizard, which is right under the chameleon, bush meat, God says don't eat that, and the snail, you see that, God says don't eat that, Then it, and the mole, at the bottom right, God says don't eat that. These types of bush meat that y'all have in Africa, God says don't eat it. This is why our people in Africa are suffering. We are disobeying God's dietary law, okay? Just like in America, you got the overweight black woman who wants to eat pig, shrimp, and lobster. Then she gets gout and rheumatism. Ugh, she's, she's 400 pounds of fat. Then she goes, oh, I got thyroid problems. Th no, you don't got thyroid problems. You're overeating, you're eating the wrong damn food. That's the wrong, what, that's what's wrong with you. Tell the truth. So, and, this is Bishop, a list for us not to eat these things. Bishop, let's take, uh, for instance, the senior. But the me medical doctors always say senior ha has a lot of quality and it is good for our health. It has a lot of vitamins and Blah, 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 a whole lot. So eating sinner is very good to our head. Well, guess what? God says don't eat it. So you have to choose. Is the white man your God or is the God of the Bible your God? Everybody got to make their decision. Some of you worship the white man. Some of you will suck the dirt between them from the white man's toes you love him so much. But you won't do nothing God says. That's why a lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to die. Because they hate God and they love this white man. White man said and, it's good. Got a lot of vitamins. Eat it. And 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 somebody will ask, why are they telling us it is good for us to eat it? What because is because the white man wants to reason? kill you. He wants you to drop dead. That's why. That's why he's doing it. Stop listening to him. Stop listening to the white man and the white woman. Stop listening. No, uh, so all those research that they've been conducted, they've been doing throughout the year centuries, uh, it all come to one conclusion that they want to eliminate or I mean, uh, eliminate the black race. Yes. Hey, I'm gonna show you a scripture. Uh, 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 hey, uh, Solomon, get Job 13 and four. We're coming back. Your mama Krabo Akwaba, Emilia Radio. The book of Job, chapter 13 and verse 4. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. You see that? Where'd he go? Oh, there he goes. Ye are forgers of lies and physicians of no value, meaning doctors of no value. That's physicians what God says of no about value. Right. That's what God says about them. Okay, so now let's go back to Leviticus 11. I think we're almost done. I'm not going to go through the whole chapter. I just wanted to identify those animals. What verse you at? Verse 30. Go ahead. And the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole, these are unclean to you. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the even. Right. Do me a favor and jump down to verse 39. Verse 39. And if any beast of which ye meet, excuse me. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. Read. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes 
and be unclean until the even. So God says, like, for example, if a cow or a goat, which is lawful, if it drops dead, God says, don't eat it. But if you do, you're unclean until sundown. That's what he says regarding that. Now, jump down to verse 46 and 47. Verse 46. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So you have to make a difference in your life between what is clean to eat and what is unclean to eat. Why? Because Leviticus 11 is what sanctifies the meats of God and us. So on the left side of your screen, you have clean flying birds, okay? On the right side, you got unclean flying birds. I don't know why they got, you know, I don't like this one because I see now they got duck and goose. Duck and goose are in the swan family. We can't, we can't eat that. Remember the, the animal that had webbed feet? Those two go on the other side. So they made a mistake. There. Whoever put this list together made a mistake there. Clean insects versus unclean, okay? Here's clean, unclean. Swine's flesh, pig, hog, ham, bacon, pork are abominations. Can somebody tell the black woman that pig is an abomination to eat? If you you know they get an expression, you are what you eat. When you see our black women eating that pig so much, they look at the way the shape of that pig is. They start to look just like that you are what you eat baby you better get your life right so the bottom is unclean animals the top is clean animals okay so leviticus 11 as well as deuteronomy the 14th chapter gives you a list of animals clean and unclean all right so now and yes bishop mm -hmm. if these animals are all unclean for human, I mean, consumption. What are they doing here? What is the purpose of God creating them? They for, save them they for save mankind. Them in the animal world. And the animal, like for example, shrimp or scavengers, they eat up the fecal matter or the shit on the bottom of the ocean. Like pig, pigs are, are, are scavenged, they eat up, they scavenge the earth. They eat up the refuge like vultures. They mm -hmm. serve a purpose. But God says for us, don't eat them. Do not eat them. Now, I want to answer the question, what are your dumb Christian callers called in and made a dumb statement? It's a Christian statement because Christians are, not only are they ignorant, they are evil. Give me Colossians. They are out, evil. They are evil. I, I can say that. When I was in a Christian church, I was an evil little black bastard. I was evil as hell. Now that I step out of it, I can look in and go, oh, y'all evil as hell. What Christians do is they look for scriptures to twist to get their own way. Yeah, because it is in the Bible that yes, we're gonna uh, explain it. every creature is of God and is good according to the churches. Yeah, because the church is a wicked as hell. Every creature of God is good if it be received with thanksgiving for those who believe and know the truth, which means the law. You've got to know the law to understand what Paul was talking about. And what yeah. is the motive? Right. So now, the motive behind eating unclean animals is to keep us in sin, keep yeah. us sick, keep yeah. us unhealthy. And yeah. make us weak. Yes, and make us spiritually and physically weak. Watch this. You're, you had a caller that, that wrote in and gave Colossians 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I want to explain that. Let's read the verse and explain it. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 16. Let no man, therefore, judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Stop. So what does that mean? Evil Christians say, oh, that means you can eat pork. You can eat shrimp. It says, let no man therefore judge you in meat. But is that really what it's talking about? Hold that. Get the precept in Ezekiel 45, verse 17. 
Here's the explanation. I want all you evil black Christians to listen good. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45 and verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. Meat and offerings. Go ahead. And drink offerings. Drink offerings. Go ahead. In the feast. In the and feast. in the new moons. And in the new moons. And in the Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. And all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So when the Bible says, let no man judge you in meat, it meant meat offerings because it was a law for the Israelites to offer meat offerings. Christ fulfilled that. And I'm going to show you that too. Go back to the uh, Colossians 2, 16. One more again. Yo, mama, crabble. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. Let no man, therefore, judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Read. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. You see when it says, but the body is of Christ, meaning Christ, he fulfilled the sacrificial laws. So when it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat, it meant meat offerings according to the law. Christ fulfilled yeah. that. Or in drink, it meant drink offerings, which was according to the law. Christ fulfilled that. Or in respect of an holy day. What did we do on the holy days? We offered meat offerings and drink offerings. Mm -hmm. Or on the new moon, we did what? We gave meat offerings and drink offerings. On the Sabbath days. Let me go into that a little more deeper. Go to Numbers chapter 28, verse 9. Numbers 28, verse 9. The book of Numbers. We're still dealing with, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink in respect of any holy day or new moon or Sabbath. This is the understanding. Go ahead. The book of Numbers chapter 28 and verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. So you see what we did on the Sabbath days? We gave meat offerings of lamb. It's telling you what type of meat. Lamb was the type of meat we gave on the Sabbath days. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And in the beginnings of your months. The beginning of your month is the new moons. The new moons. Read it again. And in the beginnings of your months, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. You see what we did on the new moon? What type of burnt offerings did we give? Two bulls. Two bulls, one ram and seven lambs of the first year without spot. That was the law for the new moon, burnt offerings. But on the Sabbath day, notice but the difference with the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day says to give two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering. But not on the, moon, on the new moon. On the new moon, that's the beginning of your months, it says for your burnt offerings, you give two young bulls, one ram, and seven lambs, okay? So now, watch this. Let's go back to Colossians now. Verse, chapter two, verse 16. The book of Colossians, chapter two and verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day. So meat offerings, don't let nobody judge you when it comes to meat offerings or in drink offerings or in respect of any holy day. Why? Because every holy day had a particular type of meat offerings and a particular type of drink offerings, which was either bull offerings, lamb, or ram. Read. Uh, or of the new moon. That's what we read just now, Numbers 28. Read. 
or of the Sabbath days. Why? Why let no man judge you? Verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. Right. Those things were a shadow of things to come. The body is of Christ. We have to obey Christ's sacrifice. So, PK, what was you going to say? Um, Bishop, don't you think at that time, previous, uh, previous, uh, Prever uh, preserving it was very difficult for them. That is why they made all these laws because at that time there were no fridges over there. You they, kill right in they, the spot. Had, yeah, they had no fridges at that time. Right. Like today. Correct. So to me, don't you think it is because of that preservation? That is why they make all the, those laws. To mankind. No. no, 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 no. Remember, these laws is about meat offerings and burnt offerings, drink offerings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although we have refrigerators today, that has nothing to do with this. We had to kill an animal right then on the spot. God did not want animals left in a in a refrigerator for a week and then you offer it to him. He wanted fresh blood animal sacrifice. That's why mm -hmm. when Christ died, he was he was dead right there on the cross, right there. He wasn't saved in a the refrigerator, then put on a cross. He was killed right then on the spot, died. They stabbed him, they whooped him, all of that. Okay. Then, then someone has sent <laughs> something here. He says, okay, so we can say we want to be vegetarian, so we don't sin. That's, that's your option, that's your choice. And as a matter of fact, watch this. When you go back to Genesis chapter 2, go to Genesis 2. Let me show you something. Genesis chapter 2. Let me look, make sure I got the right one. Uh, I'm sorry, Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, behold, I have given you Every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and thee which is fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Read. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So in the beginning, PK, everybody uh, and every animal ate herbs. From mm -hmm. man to the beasts, even the lions and the tigers and the bears, every creature ate herbs, okay? Now uh, the meat came in when you go to Genesis 9, verse 3. Go to Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. So when Noah got off the ark, let me say it again. When Noah got off the ark with his three sons and their wives, God instituted for them that it was okay to eat meat. Okay. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to show Christians off. Okay. Once we prove already that let no man judge you in meat or in drink, that is yeah. not talking about pork or shrimp or none of that crap, then they come back and say, well, we want to be vegetarian. Anything yeah. to go and get, that's how Christians are. They are mentally deranged and twisted. So once you prove them a liar, now I'm just going to eat vegetarian. Well, if that's okay, Christian, that's okay. You only want to eat vegetables, fine. So now, <laughs> so so being a vegetarian is okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. So, now, so if I don't want to be sin, if I want to be clean, then can I boldly say or advise people to be vegetarians? If you want to, they they you can't make it a law to say you have to be vegetarian. You can't do that. But they can ask, you can give them the option if they want to, because God gave a list of laws that they can eat meat. Okay. But you but, being a vegetarian is the best. 
Mm. Yeah, I'm drawing it back this. to you. I'm drawing it back to you. To you. <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian, uh, so I can't go along with that. I eat fish. But, but I am telling you, with all this deep, 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 deep secret that you've been giving us today, yes. I am telling you, you have to be vegetarian. That's you. <laughs> I am telling you, I tell you that is me. <laughs> that is, is you. Now, watch this. Hey, give me the, give me the scripture about small portions. <laughs> about a uh, little. You know what I'm talking about? Bear with me a second. I'm just trying to look for it. And before oh, you, okay, okay. Yes, this is chapter 31. Yeah, 3119. Watch this. The book of Sirach and the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31 and verse 19. A very, a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Was that the end of the whole verse? No. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Meaning gas. So God is telling us to eat a very little. When it comes to meat, eat your food in, in portions, small portions. That's why it says a very little. You know what black women do? They'll get a, they'll get a plate of food this big. It'll be high like this, and they all this is food. That's what they do. Ah, rah, 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 rah. They say, I got a thyroid problem. Why are you 400 <laughs> pounds, sister? I got a thyroid problem. No, you just finished eating three chickens, five cows, and a goat. That's why we 400 pounds. Bishop, when did God allow us to meet? Because since God said he give us herbs, when did God allow us? Do people, not, do people not listen? Do Christians not listen? Did we not just finish reading? Je go back to Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, when Noah got off the ark. This is when God gave us the law to eat meat in small portions. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even, mm -hmm. even as the green herb have I given you all things? See that? So God so he said, said every. Huh? He's, he says every. Yes. Yeah, so what does that mean? Every. That's all. Oh, okay. You sure that's what that means? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Every. That's all. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go back to Genesis 9. I'm going to have to get a, 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 a stick. Okay. Genesis chapter 9. Uh, give me where Noah gave the offering. Uh, mm -hmm. Your mama Aquaba, Emilia Radio. Bear with me, I'm looking for it. Bear with me, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, chapter eight, Genesis chapter eight and 20. The book of Genesis, chapter 8 and verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So how did Noah know what was clean? In, in order for him to know what was clean, that means he knew what was unclean. So there was already an understanding what was clean opposed to what was unclean. So when God says, eat of every living creature, common sense should say that is of the clean creatures. <laughs> Go to Genesis chapter seven now. Genesis seven and verse two, watch this. Noah's off, go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter seven and verse two. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So Noah already understood clean and unclean. 
which Moses expounded on in Leviticus 11. You see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Evil Christians don't understand that. They're sitting there right now with the pork oh, chop in their mouth. Ah, that's how the evil Christians are. They got a piece of pork right now in their mouth. Oh, no. Push me. Now, let's go back to Sirach. Sirach, Sirach chapter uh, 31, verse 16. The book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 16. 16. Eat as it becometh a man. Those things which are set before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. When it says don't devour, it means <laughs> don't be a greedy pig. Don't be a glutton. That's a sin. To be a glutton is a sin, and you're going to be hated. You go to somebody's house, it says, eat as it becometh a man. Those things which are set before thee and devour not, meaning I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna eat that. Yeah, I'm just eating everything. Oh, 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 and I would eat that. God says, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? Bishop. Now, yes. Bishop, you said the book of Sarak, but I can't find it in the Bible. Well, Sarak is in, you can Google it, go to Google and type in Ecclesiasticus. It's in all the original Bibles, got it. Let me put it up on the screen for you. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. The, all the, the regular of, Bibles, where is it at? Okay, all the regular Bibles got the where is it at? Old Testament, yeah, Apocrypha in the center, and New Testament at the down here. Those but are the, all the, the original but, King James Version but, Bibles. But the one that I have, I, 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 I have the only. Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah, you got. The, That's you, why I'm asking you. You got the edited. You got the edited version. That's what you got. <laughs> okay, so so the, the the one that I have is not the true. It's not the original. No, it's not the original. That's edited. That in the 1700s, the Protestant white man took out the books called the Apocrypha. But and the you question go on Google and you can get it. And the question comes again: Why? Because the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Right, here you go right here. This is yeah, the original King absolutely. James Version 1611. You have the Old Testament here at the top. In the center, you see it says the book's called Apocrypha. So it was in the original King James Version, but they took yeah. that out. Then you see the books of the New Testament at the bottom. Okay? So, now... Why do we need to obey God's dietary law? Give me Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 28, 61. Why? Why do we need to obey it? This for all you women that claim you got a thyroid problem. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So one reason you get sick is by bad eating, eating the wrong foods. And some of you who are eating the right foods, you eat too much. You overeat. Give me that verse again about overeating in Sirach. Overeating is in the Bible. Yes, in Sirach. It's in Sirach. The book of God. The book of of Sirach Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 31 and verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetch mm -hmm. and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Right. Hey, go to chapter 30 and mm, let me see. Chapter 30 and verse 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 25. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. You see that? A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. You ever meet some women, they're evil and mean as hell? That's because they don't have a care of their meat and diet. That's why they're mean spirited, a lot of them. You got mm -hmm. a few brothers like that too, you overweight, fat, slobby brothers. You better have a care of your meat and your diet, okay? But it says only a cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and his diet. 
Okay, now watch this. Get uh -huh. First Timothy 4, verse 8. I want all you piggly wigglies out there to listen good. The book of First Timothy, chapter and no, 4. I'm not body shaming. You know what? The, he's trying to shame me. He's body shaming. I'm trying to save your life. That's what I'm trying to do, sister. Read but, that. In, but in Africa, when, when you are fat, you know, you get that shape. <laughs> you big belly, you know. You say, ah, oh, no, you are looking good. You are looking <laughs> good, man. You are looking good. When you are tiny and says it like a Coca-Cola Coca shape, you say, ah, why? Don't you have food? Why? Don't you have money to buy food? Listen. When you are big in Africa, they respect you. <laughs> hey, in the Bible, you read about, you. there's one man, there's two fat people in the Bible. One was uh -huh. Eli, said he was fat. It said he was heavy. And there was another guy in the book of Judges, I forgot his name. But the, it, we, it was never our custom to be fat. Okay? We were to be healthy. Hey, give me that too. Give me that. Watch this. Let me... In Sirach again, where it says good health, get Sirach 30 and 15. And be sure we have uh, 10 more minutes to okay. end up. 10 more okay. minutes. And the pastor, my friend pastor, could not make it because his is car is, I mean, 40. No, no, his car is, I mean, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Give he me he Sirach. has a problem with the car. Okay. Sirach so 30 and 15. It, yeah. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 15. Health and good estate of body are above all gold and a strong body above infinite wealth. So God is teaching us to have good health and good estate of body. Good health. You cannot have good health eating pig, swine, shrimp, lobster. And you can't have good health if you're overeating gluttonous. Give me 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, please. The book of First Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 8. Four. You know what a brother told me? A brother told me he wants a, wo a, a, a woman shaped like that. So yeah. I looked at him, and he's shaped, shape. He shaped like this, like a circle. I said, brother, <laughs> look, look, look at you. You're fat all around. You want a woman like this? Come on, bro. She, go, she works out. She looks good, but you look like a circle. Come on. Take care of yourself. He can't even walk upstairs. He's breathing heavy. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fat pork chop eating brothers and sisters too. First Timothy 4 verse 8. The book of First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little. You see that? Bodily exercise profits little. So the Bible is saying exercise. Even if it's a little exercise, can fat men and women understand that? Can skinny men and women understand that? Because the Bible talks about being malnutrition too. Undernourished, poorly developed. The Bible talks about it all. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we got to understand that. Now, I know somebody's going to say, you mean God's going to kill me if I eat pork to some fat woman right now? And fat men, they're probably sitting together. They probably just finished having sex. And you know, when two fat people have sex, it's like thunder and lightning. Boom, boom, boom. That's how it sounds. And the house is shaking because they got pork chops and shrimp everywhere. Give me the scripture in Isaiah 66 about eating uh, 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 pork. Y'all better get yourselves right. The so, so, um, okay. Okay, go on, go on. Um, Isaiah 66 and verse 17. Yes, that's it. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. See that? God is going to kill you for eating swine's flesh, that's pig and pork and bacon, and God is going to kill you for eating the mouse. That's in the, the weasel family, your bush meat, and the abomination of all those other animals. I told my listener no, that the technicians are doing all that they could to bring you back to wrap up for us, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Tell us the truth. So I hope you all learned something from today's lesson. Of course. Uh, there is a dietary law. Remember, there's five sets of law. You had yeah. um, dietary law, mm -hmm. civil law, moral law, 
ceremonial law mm -hmm. and sacrificial law. The sacrificial law of, of sacrifice was done away with. So there's only four types now, okay? And Christ summed up all of those in two, two yeah. laws. Love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love mm -hmm. your neighbor as yourself. Jeff. So that includes all those four types of laws and statutes that we must abide in, we must obey. Let's get healthy, let's get right, because winter is coming. The white man is gonna send COVID-19 once again to kill black people and is gonna send it to Africa too. So get ready. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.